my name is Dave Prescott. I am the South County Coast Keeper for Save the Bay. What is Save the Bay and what do they do? Um, Save the Bay is an advocacy, education, and restoration uh, environmental organization that's been around for almost 43 years now. Um, we work to um, develop policies that help to protect the bay and our local waters. We restore native habitats and we educate um, students and the public um, about the importance of protecting the bay. Why was Save the Bay started? Uh, Save the Bay started over 40 years ago based upon um, the need, uh, based upon um, s several development issues that had the potential to have some really negative impacts to the bay. Um, a coal, uh, a nuclear power plant, a, a um, uh, what's it, a nuclear power plant, a coal fire plant, um, a oil refinery, all of those had, a, had definitely a huge potential of, of having negative impacts and that was just a group of small people getting together to try to, to stop them from happening. In what ways has Save the Bay been affected by coastal erosion, and do you foresee coastal erosion to affect Save the Bay in the future? Um, we have actually been personally affected by coastal erosion. Um, Hurricane Sandy had had um, a very negative impact to our exploration center in, in Newport. Um, when the storm actually came ashore, it put about three feet of water inside the exploration center. It flooded the entire basement where all our pumps and filters were. We didn't actually lose any fish or any other creatures, but um, it did obviously, you know, fry our, our, our equipment and whatnot. So, in so in, in looking forward for that, we are already making the steps to um, look for more long-term, more sustainable areas to actually rebuild um, the exploration center, which which is one of our showcase um, off uh, centers. What is your role as South County Coast Keeper in regards to coastal erosion? Oh, my role has definitely changed a lot over the last five years. Um, I have a lot of my role is speaking out um, against um, harmful development or or development that's not really sustainable around the coastline. Um, as we have higher sea levels, more frequent storms, more intense storms, um, the there are a lot of options on the table, and oftentimes it leads to having to move away from that area to be actually safer. Um, and one of the things that we've actually been advocating for is, is, is looking at balancing all those different options from rebuilding to raising the structures to retreating and actually abandoning the property. How has coastal erosion impacted the coast of Rhode Island over the past few years? Coastal erosion is not a new thing. It has been happening for decades, centuries. Um, the biggest issue recently is that with higher sea levels and <clears throat> more intense and frequent storms that we're starting to see these impacts more and more. So since we built houses along the shoreline, those are permanent structures on, on, a, on, a, on a beach that wants to move. Beaches always want to move. Beaches are dynamic. They want to move in, they want to move out. When you put something permanent, something hard structured against there, whether it's a seawall or a structure itself, it has nowhere to move. So ultimately, you know, the sea will take that away and that's actually what a lot of what we're seeing is seeing that the erosion rates are, are, are actually are actually growing because we're so close to the shore now. How have you seen Rhode Island's coastline change over the years? Um, kind of just building upon the last very similar, I mean it's we can definitely see it. There, there's, there's no question that you have areas that um, were had several had a hundred feet in front of them that now have 25 feet in front of them and that has a lot to do with the fact that we're losing our dune systems. Um, we've been building up these areas for a long time. So it, it actually is happening right before us. And if, we, if, we, if, if Sandy had actually hit us um, as a direct hit rather than a side swipe, the, the whole coast of, of, of Rhode Island would be completely different. We were very fortunate with Sandy, but that not, does not mean that we're out of the, out of the woods yet. We're, this is the kind of new climate that we live in. It's the kind of the new normal that we need to deal with. Is it wise for people to continue to build properties along the coast? It's a great question whether or not it's wise. Um, a lot of the families that have properties along the coast have lived there for century, uh, for, for basically for decades, and there's a lot of personal connection to these properties. And one of the things is that we've got to be very cautious about taking away the, that, that basically personal side of things and, and, and getting the public to realize that 
these kind of building in these types of environments is not sustainable. So it's not, you know, overall it's not a wise decision. Ultimately, we need to look at places that are further away from the ocean, further away from flooding, um, higher, um, and 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 stop spending taxpayer money to help rebuild them. What do you see as the biggest challenge of the future of Narragansett Bay? Um, it, it, you know, we'll always have our our different development projects that could threaten potentially the the, the health and the ecosystem of the bay. Um, but really, the the biggest thing is is climate change because it's one of those things that we just don't know what the true impacts are going to be. We're seeing them everywhere. We're seeing them along the coast where the erosion is worth. We're seeing it in our salt marshes where higher sea levels mean that it's showing us that our marshes are actually sinking and that we have no places for our, our marshes to retreat to. So really climate change is the issue of, of and it's going to be the issue for a long time going forward.